Hey guys, Chase, and today I'm gonna to be talking all things jet boil. If you are new to owning a jet boil, or you're looking at buying your first one, you wanna make sure that you're setting it up correctly and you want some tips on how to use it more efficiently and make use of all the features that it has, um, I'll dive into that. And I will also touch on some tips on using these in cold weather um, if you are looking to get out and use these in the winter. So all these tips are kind of just based off of my experience over the last 10 years of using um, all of the different jet boil models. Uh, this video is not sponsored by Jetboil. I just like them a lot and have used them for a long time. So I will uh, dive in first to the setup, all the parts, components, and then how to actually use it. And then at the end, I will go into some tips on using it more efficiently or if you're in cold weather. All right, first off, the components of the Jetboil, uh, you got this lid. In the lid, there is, there's two sets of holes. One's kind of like a strainer, so if you're making noodles or something, um, you can strain them out, dump the water out, and then the other is just a drinking slot. And then in the middle, there is a hole, and that is for uh, a Java press. They sell a Java press that has a little spine that goes down through there and then connects to the um, filter for the press to press down. And then you've got the pot itself. Inside of the pot, there are lines that indicate um, the max fill line, as well as there's measuring lines. So it'll give you the you know one cup, two cup. And then on the outside of the cup, there's a insulation sleeve. And on that sleeve, there's this little, the logo, it actually changes color um, when your water gets hot. And so you can kind of see that you are, or yeah, when your fuel is hot. And then down on the bottom of the pot, there's this, they call it the flux ring. And it's basically just a more efficient heat exchange method between the stove and the cup itself. And it also helps to block out wind because oftentimes like right now it's kind of windy. And so um, that can affect your, your flame. And then it's got the little slots on there that lock onto the stove piece itself. And when you get it, it has this cup nested on the bottom and this is just a plastic cup. It also has measuring lines inside. So you can use that for determining how much water you need to make if um, you're trying to heat up water for a dehydrated meal or um, just a cup of coffee or something. And then you can also drink straight out of it. And so it acts as just a, a second little vessel. And then you've got the stove itself. You've got the burner right there and then a little striker. Most of their models have the striker built in on the side and it just sparks up there just like a, a normal grill at home. And then you've got the valve right here to turn the fuel on and off. And like I said in the other video, some models have a actual regulator and some are just a valve that's not super precise. Then depending on the model, or maybe you just have to buy these separate, they have these pot holders. And this is if you are using a pot or a pan that they sell, or just like a can of soup or anything that's not this cup, you just set it right on top here and then you can set whatever you are cooking on top of there. You definitely don't want to just set like a, a pot or a pan directly on top of this if it doesn't have those flux ring connectors. And then you've just got your jet power fuel and this is a isobutane and propane fuel mix and they come in different ratios. There's different brands. As far as I'm aware, you can pretty much use any brand that you want to. I've used a whole variety. Some have more propane, some have less and I'll dive into that a little bit more when it comes to the cold weather considerations. Lastly, you've got this little triangle fuel can support and depending on the size can you have, you'll use either the inside or the outside um, supports. And this is just to help to stabilize the cup when you are um, heating up water things so that it doesn't tip over. There's nothing worse than a pot tipping over and pouring out all the water that you just burned a bunch of fuel to, to heat up. So this is nice to have. And then if you want to expand this kit at all, like I mentioned, they do make pots and pans that fit um, specifically with these. I will, I'll link up everything down below. Um, I don't have mine with me today, but uh, those are nice and convenient to have if you're trying to cook, you know, meals in, or um, you're just trying to fry something on a pan, especially if you're car camping, things like that, um, as well as the Java press that you can get. Okay, so when it comes to actually setting up these stoves, um, there are a handful of things that you wanna do to make sure it goes smoothly. The first thing, is picking a good spot. Uh, obviously you want something that can be somewhat level. You can use this these uh, this pot stabilizer to kind of jam it into the dirt or the um, mud to stabilize it, get it nice and level and flat. And then when you're picking a location, because it's oftentimes really windy outside, try to find something that's on the leeward side of a big object, whether it's a tree or a stump or a log or rocks or your backpack. Um, and that'll just help to control the wind so that your flame is not just constantly getting blown um, sideways and you're losing half the heat out the sides. And then you just thread your stove right on top. You don't want to cross thread it make sure it goes on nice and easily. 
And when you do that, a lot of times it'll leak a little bit of fuel, uh, more so when you're taking it off, but it's not a big deal. It'll just kind of spurt for a second. And then once you've got your stove on there, then you're going to want to take your cup and put the amount of water that you need in here. So if you're doing a dehydrated meal like a peak refuel or mountain house, on the back they'll have a specific amount of water that you need for the dehydrated meal. And because you don't want to waste fuel heating more water than you need, you can use the measuring cup or the, the measuring lines inside and fill this up off of the stove itself. So once you've got some water in your pot, you just turn on the fuel, strike it, you can hear it come on, and then you set your pot right on top and lock it into place. And then put your lid on top and uh, it's good to go. And then you can just watch for you know steam or it to boil or else just keep an eye on the logo itself and you'll see when it gets hot. Okay, and a few tips for using this a little bit more efficiently. Like I mentioned, the wind is huge. So you can use these um, peak refuels or, you know, whatever you have, backpack. They even sell um, like aluminum surrounds to block the wind. But just kind of build yourself a wind guard. Don't get them too close to where they're going to catch on fire or burn. But building a guard around your, your stove can help to uh, save fuel and just make sure that you're getting the most efficiency out of it. And then another thing is if you are cooking any sort of food inside of here, so if you're just pouring soup inside, something like that, make sure that you're stirring it a lot. And um, on that note, I would highly recommend getting a spoon, one of these long ones. This is a, a titanium spoon. And it makes it nice because you can reach way down into the pot as well as when you're um, eating any of these meals. You can reach way down inside without having to shove your hand in and get it all covered in cheese and beans and stuff. Um, so these spoons are really nice. Make sure to carry a second lighter or a set of matches or something, which you should already have in your backpack. Because these strikers do go out and the last thing you want is to not be able to fire it up just because the striker went out and you don't have any other way to create a spark to light your stove. Okay, so cold weather usage. Because these jet boils use this compressed fuel that has to vaporize in order to burn, it does have limitations when it comes to cold weather. There's a certain temperature where they will just stop vaporizing and that will be dependent on your elevation and other things. But for the most part, if you're just doing moderate cold weather activities where it's just below freezing, you know, in the 20s, 30s, you can still use them. And there are a few tricks that you can used to help it uh, be more reliable and more efficient. And most of them rely around keeping the fuel from getting cold. So the first thing is, if you're carrying fuel, I recommend the smaller bottles because in the winter they can be easier to stash on your body. And so like batteries or anything that gets um, zapped by the cold, you want to make sure that you keep this thing warm. And one of my favorite ways to do it is to shove it into a pocket. So if you're wearing a jacket, shove it into the pockets, chest pocket, whatever, keep it close to your body. And that way your body is constantly keeping it warm um, until you go to use it. And you can do this at night if you are sleeping or just toss it in your sleeping bag with you. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's better than not having any fuel. And so you're just maintaining the, the warmth of the fuel. Otherwise, you could put it inside of extra clothes, try to put it like in the middle of your backpack. And so it's insulated from the outside and it'll slow down a lot cooler. Uh, but either way, you want to keep it cold. And then when you go to use it, using this pot stand, or if you have a sleeping pad or any sort of pad to separate it from the snow, setting this directly in the snow, the snow will conduct the heat out of that thing very quickly. And so it's best to separate it somehow. Um, you could even insulate it, you know, leave it wrapped in um, uh, your, your beanie or something. But whatever you do, just keep it off of the snow and prevent it from cooling down while you're using it. Now, if you're out in the snow and you're using this to boil snow to get water, one thing you can do to help speed that process up is add a little bit of water into the pot with the snow to start it um, warming up quicker. That can help a lot. And so if you just save a little bit from your water bottle and then pour it in there, that'll save you a lot of time. Or another way of going about that is to just stuff your water bottle full of snow. And that way, if it's on the side of your pack or on top of your pack, in the sun, it'll start to warm up. And so if you just always keep the bottle warm, it'll, it'll make it a much quicker process to get yourself some nice hot water. And then a tip for saving weight, if you're going out with multiple people, instead of carrying multiple full um, stove setups, you can either, you know, just have everybody share one stove and fuel canister and then carry your own um, pots that you just swap in, take turns on the stove, or you can carry your own cups and then just have one stove um, so that you're not all, all packing around a stove system, though it is nice sometimes to have redundancy. 
um, you can save a little weight by eliminating. And if you're gonna carry a cup, this is kind of the style that I like to use, something that's light, just like a plastic cup, um, especially one that has a little bit of insulation because when you're outside, especially in the cold, you're making a cup of coffee and it gets cold in two minutes flat, it's not that enjoyable. So I like a nice little insulated cup. So now if you are going out and it's gonna be extremely cold and you're not sure if this is going to work, there are a few other options. You can get a solid stove fuel, something um, or solid fuel stove, something cheap like this that just burns, you know, solid fuel that is a lot more tried and true in that type of a setting just to get you by on the rare outing. Or if you go out a lot more frequently, you might want to look towards like a white gas stove, something like the uh, MSR Whisper Light that run off of liquid fuel and they're not as fallible by the cold weather as these are. They work you know, at very, very low temperatures. So those are great. And then if you're just going out for a day trip or something like that, it might just be worthwhile to boil your water at home or at the car, put it into a thermos and just carry a thermos. Because if you're only doing, you know, a couple cups, the weight of the thermos might just off um, offset the, uh, the weight of, you know, dropping your stove and carrying a th thermos might be the same amount of weight. So that's another option. Um, and then one last tip is if you are making any food in these things they can be a little bit of a pain to clean up afterwards and so it's nice to bring something along to clean with and a good tool for that is a little scotch pad um, this is just like a cut off end of a scotch pad nice and compact you can just leave it in the pot with it and then that way you kind of have something to scrub it a little bit um, when you go to clean it so those are my tips guys ultimately you just need to get out put it to use you'll learn um, and i've found that if you have any issues jet boil is very um, responsive and helpful when it comes to resolving those and uh, if anybody else has any tips or they disagree with me go ahead and leave them down in the comments below and i'll keep an eye out there and maybe you guys want to check that out too to uh, see if people have good ideas so thanks for watching hope that's helpful